When you play the bass drum, oh, do you put, push the beater into the head or do you let it bounce back? Or another, both? another good question with a lot of different answers. I actually, we can talk about it a little bit and you can see the foot cam. Uh, we have a foot cam, yep. don't we, today? Um, you can see, uh, I actually, most of the time, sink it into the head because I use the hole in the front, very old school kind of 70s kind of tuning of the bass drum. But DW drums sound incredible. I mean, I'm not just saying that. I mean, I've used, you know, we travel a lot and we don't take a lot of gear. We do fly dates, so we use backline stuff everywhere. A DW drum with this G2, clear G2, sounds so incredible. But it's so loose that you can actually see it maybe in the foot cam. But I, I dig in. But I, I pull it back enough, you know, I prepare the stroke, the next stroke. But you'll, you can watch when we're playing some tunes. But... You know, if it's a, a jazz kind of gig with a, a double-headed bass drum that's going to give you more air pushing back, I'll feather the bass drum and, and pull it back. But that's a little bit different uh, stylistic thing. So I think it depends a little bit on the stylistic. Some rock drummers pull it back, some leave it in. So kind of whatever works, works for you. But I, I find it with that tuning that's very dry and, and deep and dark thud that I can leave it in without... But be careful, don't bounce it. You know, that's what happens. A lot of uh, beginners or, or uh, you know, people just starting, they try to leave it against the head, but it goes Even, you know, there's some weird thing with their foot that they can't really hold it Person. down. So, so that's important. If you're going to leave it in the head, really leave it in. And if you're going to bring it back, bring it back.